Lloyd, right now there's a, a lot of discussion about uh, you know we've we've gone through the you know the the up and the down of the commodity market, and so right now everyone's talking about you know what is the outlook for agriculture in your mind? What is the you know the short term outlook for agriculture? The short term outlook is is probably more impacted right now about by the shortage of money than about mm. the uh, actual values of commodities. Um, all commodities are being impacted by the credit crisis. Um, with lack, with uh, the lack of funds in the uh, uh, available, uh, whether you're a trading company or a farmer or a seed company or wherever you are in the pipeline, um, it's impacting the um, uh, the movement of product. It's impacting the uh, financing of product, and um, and so over the short term, I expect that uh, commodity prices to drift along, um, but I also believe that the fundamentals. Um, of a uh, of a growing growing uh, population on the planet, doubling uh, people by 2050, uh, basically uh, land mass that's not changing. Um, those pressures still apply. So uh, fundamentally, over the longer term, we're going to we're going to get into shortages again. Um, but the short term, it'll be floating along because of the credit crisis. You know, last year. Uh there was a there were so many people that were uh, uh, because of the jump in commodity prices were ripping all their you know their forage out, you know the, and uh, this year uh, there's a lot more interest again in people putting some of those forages back in right. after you know say having one year of wheat or one year of canola is that kind of what you guys are seeing in the marketplace? Yeah, the the question that we have is um, you know forages are such a in season business and. Um, when uh, the uh, we came out of the BSE year and uh, and the borders open to cattle again, uh, forage sales in um, in our company jumped forty percent that one year. Um, the question that I have is, do they are we going to see a similar thing happening this year? Um, I think definitely forage uh, demand will be up this year. Um, I don't know. Um, how much up? Uh, so much of planting small seeded crops is based on what the weather's like. Uh, if we have good moisture and uh, good planting conditions, uh, the potential to do that is definitely there. So where are most? Like, there's very there's only one or two public forage breeders now in in Canada. Um, where is all the forage genetics coming from? Well, it depends on uh, what species you're talking about. Um, if you're talking about, uh, say, uh, ryegrass, um, tall fescue, uh, these species on a forage level are coming out of Europe. Uh, Timothy's out of Europe. If you're looking at uh, dryland species, a lot of the dryland species works coming out of the public breeding programs either in Canada or the U.S. And uh, the nature of the dryland species is that uh, typically the market um, is not a value-added market. It is not that large. You're talking the wet, Western Canadian prairies, uh, the drier areas, and the same is true in the U.S. Um, if you're looking at alfalfa, uh, alfalfa basically there are more breeding programs, but even those are shrinking. Um, there's really only four breeding programs left uh, on alfalfa of, of any consequence. Um, and uh, uh, the one of the things that's happening is that, that there's the cost to do breeding, the new technologies cost more and more money. So you have to have a larger and larger um, sales to be able to fund any changes in breeding. So um, a case in point is, is uh, Forge Genetics has a product like Roundup Ready Alfalfa. Uh, they've spent uh, a small fortune to uh, develop the product, to test the product, to get it to market. They're unable to sell the seed. Uh, but not because of is the, is the product any good or with the demand from farmers, but they aren't able to get approval. So uh, the lessons to uh, forage breeders is uh, be conservative, take it careful because you might risk your whole company uh, if you bring something truly that's uh, 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 you know breaking the marketplace from its uh, traditional way of farming. So. Is there a large market for hybrid alfalfa? The hybrid alfalfa market is uh, growing. Um, uh, in U.S., Dairyland, which is the exclusive distributor, has moved from about 100% uh, sales of what you call your traditional alfalfa varieties to now they're about 60% is hybrid. Uh, that wouldn't be happening if farmers didn't see the value in that. In Western Canada, uh, we don't see that growth, and a lot of it is related more to the way we farm. 
than it is about um, anything else. So if you're a high-end producer producing high-end alfalfa crops under irrigation or hay for export, hybrid alfalfa makes a lot of sense for you. Uh, for dairy farmers, depending on the acres they farm, could make a lot of sense for you. But for a lot of farmers that, are, that they'd rather uh, have more acres of pasture, that's, it's questionable whether you're really going to see the benefit of a product like hybrid alfalfa on, um, on a pasture field. Last week, uh, I had a lot of you know calls and emails from from farmers, you know, excited and wondering, you know, what is is what is going to happen with canola prices and you know with the canola market now that uh, the EU has uh, said they're going to accept GMO material uh, with canola. Uh, what do you think the ben- the impact is going to be? Well, it it opens up the EU market to our canola. Are we going to see a a flood of canola uh, boats? Uh, hitting the ports? No. I think we'll see a few companies um, uh, move a few boats of canola, see how it works, see what are the problems, try to get through the regulatory issues, try to make sure they understand all the costs. And if that goes, I could see us moving more product next year. So uh, my view is, uh, yes, it's, it's going to help. Uh, is it going to dramatically change our market? I don't think so. Uh, over the next couple of years, um, though we may see some uh, more significant uh, exports. Okay, Lloyd, well, thank you very much for spending time with us today. Okay, thank you very much, and all the best to real agriculture.